Hello dear friends and colleagues we are very happy to introduce to you Moxie glow while doing experiments with uv lights it was a serendipity finding for us that at 395 nanometer uva purple light moxifloxacin is a fluorescent molecule then digging deep in the literature we realized that moxie is essentially a fluorinated derivative of quinine and the word fluorescence is derived from fluorin so the fluorescence of fluoroquinolone is thanks to fluorin based on these facts we devised a device named moxiglow which is fitted to surgical microscope and also to slit lamp this moxiglow helped us to actually visualize the moxifloxacin in real time and also enable us to record what really happens to it in the anterior chamber Molecular molar weight of water is 18 grams per mol of mercury it is 200.5 grams per mol of lead it is 207 grams per mol whereas molar weight of moxifloxacin is 401.4 grams per mol so at full concentration the moxi is 22.3 times heavier than water and 2 times heavier than mercury and lead and it is not readily miscible with aqueous humor it is so heavy that even if we add it in bss pint it gravitates down so when we inject undiluted 0.1 cc of 0.5% moxi we can see that it remains localized not readily miscible in the rest of the anterior chamber and it will not be homogeneous and some or much of it may leak from bigger side ports so protection provided and the results will be variable for few hours the concentration here can be as high as 5000 micrograms per ml which may cause endothelitis or iris atrophy according to escrs endothelmentary study and erwin group study if you don't use intracameral moxi there is one in 1400 chance of endo and if you use the chance is one in 5800 so there is a four fold risk reduction aretic or low dose moxi one in 3400 chance an aretic high dose moxi tas and iris atrophy chance so it is a hamlesian dilemma like a ditch or dike to use or not so what is the solution the solution is to make a solution a diluted solution which we have learned from dr steve arshinov the ideal concentration of moxi is 1500 micrograms per ml and fill the full anterior chamber with it to make which we add 1.5 ml moxi in 3.5 ml bss which we call moxi mix which is 1500 micrograms per ml please note that after closing the syringe with the piston we need to gently shake the moxi mix few times to homogenize it because moxi is not readily miscible in the bss even after this dilution it still is identifiable because it looks very faintly pale yellow but if still there is any confusion in the minds of doctor or staff we can just switch on the moxi glow and we can instantly realize which syringe is containing diluted moxi mixi and which one is containing the plain bss we insert the moxi mix cannula from side port always remaining in front of the iris and inject the moximix whirling it and swirling it till the entire chamber is full and the moxi starts to overflow from this and the opposite side port and then we hydrate the side ports with the same solution we can see moxi going into the corneal stroma around the side ports and then we check the intraocular pressure to be around 20 25 and this is the last step of the surgery it is my personal preference and recommendation as well even to do hydro dissection and hydro delineation with moximix so that it is present in the anterior chamber right from the beginning of the surgery moxifloxacin is such a sticky and tenacious molecule that even after the complete phacoemulsification with so much of fluid turn fluid turnover it is still present in the capsular bag fornix because it is absorbed by the cortex with things
under the 395 nanometer UV moxifloxacine has a sort of a divine glow very reassuring divine glow which always reminds me of the northern lights the polar lights the divine aurora borealis this video under moxie glow is taken seven hours after the surgery and we can still see that the moxifloxacin is present in the anterior chamber significantly it's almost the same amount which we had injected at the end of the surgery with acetazolamide 250 mg given immediate post op we can see moxifloxacin in a fairly significant amount even at the end of 10 hours post op even after 15 hours we can still see significant amount of moxifloxacin in the anterior chamber even after 24 hours the tenacious moxie is still there so with the sarvaguna sampan moxi mix moxi gun in our hands we can be as sure secured and confident as ian fleming's 007 the bond james bond and forever say never again to the end of thelmitis here with deep and soulful gratitude we dedicate this video series to the pioneer moxie guru, the most respected Dr. Steve Arshinov. Along with Dr. Steve Arshinov, we were recently honored with gold medals and felicitated by Saffron Safa Pag, the Indian traditional headgear of valor and honor for our work on zero endophthalmitis by the Bombay Ophthalmic Association. With moxie glow, we can use moxie eye drops to stain the cornea instead of fluorescent sodium. Cataracts are also fluorescent due to beta-carbolin and tryptophan. So we can shine the moxiglow to detect or demonstrate the presence of cataract. This child had congenital nasolacrimal duct block in left eye. 20 minutes after putting moxie eye drops, when we shine the moxiglow, we can see that the drug has passed into the nose on the patent side while the drug is retained in the lacrimal lake on the blocked side. This is good for us for confirmation as well as good for demo to parents. You can buy this from Amazon and use as DIY Moxie Glow. And have a glorious glowing and evergreen career with Moxie and Moxie Glow. Thank you very much for your kind attention.